Hello, Maker Melissa, Maker Melissa's Lab. In this video, I'm going to be taking my stock Ender 3 and applying a ton of upgrades after printing a bunch on my Prusa i3 with a bunch of upgrades. I am in love with that, and this definitely needs some stuff. I have a few upgrades to do, like uh, adding BL Touch so that I have the auto bed, le auto bed leveling. It also has the flexible build plate with magnets on it, so I can go ahead and replace this easily. I have dual lead screws. I have direct drive instead of it doing the Bowden tube. I'm gonna be replacing the main board with an SKR 1.3. I'm gonna have a 2.8 inch touch screen, and I printed off a ton of parts. I'm gonna be replacing the main fan with this Noctua 40, by 10 millimeter fan and that's supposed to be way quieter. I have a different power supply so it can run at the 12 volts that this needs. I have Capricorn tubing. I have XT60 connectors. This thing is just gonna get the whole works. Let's get started. do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this and I'm going to set up the main board in this whole case here that I printed that I found on Thingiverse. This is a case that was designed by Teaching Tech which is another YouTube channel that I like to follow and I'm going to go ahead and install that really quick. Okay I've gone ahead and mounted the main board in here and the Raspberry Pi in here. I've gone ahead and attached my stepper motor drivers. I have TMC 2208s. These are the version 3s, so they actually don't need any soldering. So I went ahead and have them in here. And then I've gone ahead and removed the cover off of here for the printer. And I've detached this little box. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is go ahead and put this box in the rear of it and start moving the wires over from this board to that. So the goal is just basically to go one upgrade at a time and make sure the printer's working. That way we don't just do a whole bunch of upgrades and oops, something's not working, I don't know what it is. Okay, I've gone ahead and completed all the wiring. I have the motherboard in there. I have flashed the firmware onto there with just the basics on there. And all the functionality is working, including the stock screen. So for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and install the dual lead screws here so that when I go ahead and change over to the direct drive, it's going to have a lot more strength. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the dual Z axis here. Uh, it works just with this belt here, which helps it go up and down, and it's working pretty well. I had to level it, and so I just decided to use these two hard drives because it had to be two identically sized things. It appears that there were a few items that I still needed to 3D print, and they're going on the printer now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next thing, which is getting the new touchscreen LCD working. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the LCD. I ended up printing off this nice case here. Um, I'll go ahead and link it in the description. I went ahead and I customized the LCD buttons as well and it's just how I like it. Uh, one thing I installed a little bit earlier that I had forgotten to mention is on the front of the printer. Let me get into view here. In the front of the printer, I installed this little cover here for the belt, and it just looks nicer. 
I've gone ahead and printed off the power supply relocation brackets and they're gonna end up going on like this. Now one thing I had to do a little modification of is I had to cut a little notch in here with an X-Acto knife because uh, the way that this slides on I didn't want it to be impeded so I cut this little notch on here and now I can put the I can remove the cover without having to remove the whole bracket here but I do have to remove the bracket if I want to pull the whole assembly out from behind the printer and so I'm going to actually wait until the end in order to install these because when I go to install the fan, I'm going to have to install um, the, this little buck converter here and it's going to be a lot easier if I can pull it out. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and install is this spring steel bed with these magnets here. I got that off of Amazon and I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well. I'm starting off by cleaning off the plate here with some alcohol so that the adhesive will stick to it. This is some 99% alcohol, which I like to get the pure stuff because the other stuff is kind of watered down. This will make it so the adhesive for the magnets will stick much better. Now the magnets come in these little plastic cases here. and you're actually intended to take them off and stick it so that the, there's a little more sticking power to the build plate there. There. Now we put that on here and because the Z in stop doesn't move at all. What we end up doing is we need to move it down by adjusting these knobs here. And I'll have to kind of play with it more, but let's just kind of roughly adjust it down a little bit. We have the new height of the magnet, but the build plate is a little bit thinner than the old one here. So it shouldn't need to be adjusted by that much. Next up, we'll go ahead and install the fan here. I'll basically need to be installing this buck converter because it's a 12 volt fan and we have a 24 volt system on here. And we have this so that we can kind of interface. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention before is uh, while I was in there, I went ahead and replaced this old plug with a genuine XT60 connector. It just feels a little more solid than this one and I don't want it coming undone. You can tell the difference between the genuine and the other one because they're like different colors. Um, another tell that when I was looking at it is the fake one does not have a little bit of a notch up here, but the the real one actually has a slight notch here, so it kind of holds it together a little bit better. But they did a pretty good job of faking it. In fact, let me even see if the real one would connect with the fake one or not. Eh, this 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 side feels really flimsy. But I'll go ahead and install this so I can just kind of easily tap into the existing power. I've gone ahead and installed the new half of that, wired up all the electronics, and rerouted the cables so they're really good. And the next step, I'm going to be going ahead and installing the direct drive here. I have uh, some Capricorn tubing, which I'll be upgrading on that. Um, I may or may not need these connectors, so I have those. And while I'm at it, I'm going to be installing the Hero Me fan duct here. Went ahead and made a remix of this half of the box here because I wanted to add a, places to add two more buck converters on here. The system now uses two total buck converters with space for an additional one if I would decide I want anything. Right now I have one buck converter going straight from the power output over into the Raspberry Pi to power it. And I have another buck converter over here going from the fan output of the SKR 1.3 over into the Noctua 12 volt fan, which is mounted up here in this box. 
Okay, I've gone ahead and installed most of this here. I have the direct drive gear installed and I installed the Hero Me fan duct here. In the direct drive kit, I was supposed to get a little extension cable that was uh, supposed to go from here over to the motor since it needs to go all the way over to here now. But apparently I didn't check it when I first got it and I kind of figured it out. Uh, the person who sold it to me is actually going to go ahead and send me out another one. In the instructions, there was actually two of these, but in my kit and including in the eBay listing, it only had one of these. And so, since you're supposed to hook up one on this motor and one down here, I went ahead and I went into Fusion 360 and I designed a copy of it, pretty much. It's pretty close, at least. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up by working on installing the BL Touch and I happen to have a little shim here for the Z-axis motor. It's loose because it's it was binding when I first got it so I'm going to probably go ahead and install that as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to need it but it looks like I will. And I think I'm at a point where I can go ahead and install the power supply brackets here and get this all pushed in here. Three weeks later. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've attached the power supply along with the brackets. I have mounted the BL Touch on here. And it's actually been a few weeks since I was, had started filming this, but I had another project come up and I had to kind of put this on hold for a bit, but I'm back here now. You may have noticed my lab has changed a little bit. I have a new computer, which is on a stand now. Uh, I got this nice skull here. And now you can see it. And in the meantime, the part came that I was missing from here, the extra cable. I've gone ahead and attached it with this loom tubing, and it's going to here. So I think I have everything wired up at this point. Now I need to go ahead and make sure that the BL Touch is actually working. So I thought I would just kind of update you before I start working on that. I've gone ahead and I've configured the auto bed leveling on here and I've tested it and it works. I have some filament on here because I'm going to print here soon and I'm going to go show you the auto bed leveling in progress. So I can go to tools and click on auto level on here and we'll automatically go ahead and home the axis if needed and then it will do a nine point homing sequence starting here kind of going in an S shape and ending up over here. And that is the sequence. Now let's go ahead and print something. Okay, I've gone ahead and sliced my 3D benchy that I'm printing off and it looks like it's going pretty well here. I'll show you as soon as it's done. Okay, so my Benchy finished printing overnight and uh, what ended up happening was I think it came off the print bed here and it's probably because the re this heat bed is attached with these little magnets here and what they do is they kind of raise it up so it doesn't transfer heat quite as well. There's a little space. So I'm actually going to end up replacing this with a little magnetic sheet heat bed that will go right to the surface here. I just wanted to try this one out, plus it kind of gave me a powder coated sheet here. But overall, I'm not too happy with this powder coated sheet just because of the way that it's raised up and I think it's, you'd actually have to make the heated bed go a little bit higher in order to compensate for that little gap of space there. Um, so other than that, the Benchy started out really well here. If I take the spaghetti off the top here, then um, there's a little bit of an um, imperfection along here. And that might be due to the slicer, but it also could be the original hot end on here. Anyway, so I have another round of upgrades that I want to be doing here shortly. And be sure to keep an eye out for that video. In fact, if you want to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon, then you'll be notified when there are 
new videos. But the bell icon is kind of cool because it'll actually tell you all your videos instead of just like ones that it thinks you'll want. So go ahead and hit like if you like the video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.